Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice is directed by Zack Snyder and stars Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill, Amy Adams, Jesse Eisenberg, and Gal Gadot. So this is a spoiler free review. Don't worry if you haven't seen the movie yet. We'll be spoiling any of the plot points for you. Um, I'll be doing a spoiler review later on in the week after uh, some of you have gotten the chance to see it. So be on the lookout for that one. So Bruce Wayne aka Batman is afraid that if Superman goes unchecked he can turn on humanity and end up destroying the entire human race. So now we have Batman going up against Superman in this epic clash of heroes. And I have to say, I've been waiting a very long time for this movie. That, this is two characters that I really wanted to see on screen for the longest time. And this is easily one of my most anticipated films of this year. And it was most anticipated for a lot of other fans as well. But I'm so torn on this movie. There's a lot of stuff that I like in this movie, but then there's a lot of stuff that I didn't like in this movie. So first off, let me talk about what I did like about this film. Ben Affleck as Batman is fantastic. I really loved his portrayal as Batman in this film. It's a newer, more older seasoned Batman, and my god is he ruthless. Like, the way he fights, the way he handles crime, is like he has very little mercy in this film. But aside from that, th there's one really big issue that I have with the character, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. And Gal Gadot, I was so pleasantly surprised by her role as Wonder Woman. I'm more comfortable with her handling a whole franchise now. When Wonder Woman does come out, I think next year it is, I could be wrong. She was one of my concerns going into this movie. I mean, I liked her in the Fast and the Furious movies because like that role didn't demand too much out of her. And there's nothing in there that said, hey, I really want this chick as Wonder Woman. You need to get her as Wonder Woman. But now after seeing the movie, I'm uh, all those worries were gone. I think she did a fantastic role as Wonder Woman. And then there's Henry Cavill as Superman. I mean, I wasn't blown away by his portrayal of Superman. I thought he did a, a fine job, but I liked him more as Clark Kent. Because when he's Superman, he's sort of just reacting to things around him, um, what other people are saying about him. But when he's Clark Kent, he's actually doing something. One of the things I've always liked about the Superman character is he, that's not his only way of helping people. He, he fights crime and big bad guys as Superman, but when he goes back to Clark Kent, he's still helping people through journalism and sort of telling the stories of the little guy and helping out citizens that way. And that's something that I've always appreciated for the Clark Kent character. And they sort of showed that in this movie because he's supposed to be covering the stories that Perry White assigns to him, but he totally ignores that and goes after the Batman story with the one that he cares about. And I think it makes it a little bit more personal with him for the conflict with him and Batman. Um, sort of, not a whole, not a really big personal, but there's more about that in this, my spoiler review. And one of the things that I really love about this movie is the stories become so personal to Batman and Superman. I mean, Bruce was present the day uh, Zod attacks Metropolis, and he has a building in Metropolis. And it so happens that the building that Zod takes out of his TV vision just happens to be one of the Wayne Towers. And I like how personal it makes it because Bruce loses friends in this fight and he sort of blames Superman for it. And it gets personal for Superman too because he's at the center of all this controversy is whether the world needs a Superman, do they need a savior, and he's just trying to do the right thing. And that affects him. He struggles with his decisions to help people and he he's wondering if he's doing the right thing and I, just, I really liked how personal these stories got. Then of course you have to deal with the subtitle of this movie which says Dawn of Justice and there's all these Justice League tie-ins and is it necessary to have this in there? No, but it's cool to see. As a comic book fan, I really like seeing all these other tie-ins to the future Justice League movie, and it gets me excited for future movies. And the action in this film is something worth seeing, I have to say that. It's really awesome to see Batman and Superman fight on the screen for a portion of the movie, and the fight against Doomsday, no surprise he's in this movie, uh, is really well done as well. And visually, this is a really good film. One thing that Zack Snyder knows how to do is make a visual compelling frame. I mean, the opening sequence alone is amazing. But unfortunately, despite everything that I like about this film, Batman v Superman is a disappointing mess. There, there's a lot of problems in this film. And unfortunately, Lois Lane is sort of one of the weaknesses of this film. For the first half, half of it, she's sort of like following leads for trying to uncover this story that she's trying to find out who's behind this one event. But at the climax of the film, she's kind of just like there. Then there's Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. I mean, when I first saw him in the trailer, I was like, ah, I don't, I don't see him as Lex Luthor. And that's pretty much what he is in this film. I mean, there are a couple of scenes where he's a little toned down and he his performance did work for me in those scenes, but overall his Lex Luthor was just too over the top. He has a couple of moments where he just has these little like 
like psychotic outbursts. They'll be giving a speech and they'll stop in the middle of it and be like, no, 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 I, I, what, what I mean? Uh, uh, I don't want to see Lex Luthor as that kind of psychotic character. And I'd much rather see Lex Luthor as sort of like that sly business guy who does things under the books just because to get his way and to get his way to kill Superman. That's the kind of Lex Luthor I want to see. I just didn't like this portrayal of Lex Luthor. And one of the biggest problems for me in this movie was that it is trying to cram in so much. And it's very noticeable with the editing of this film because it would constantly do this back and forth uh, between scenes and storylines. And as soon as you get invested in one scene, it's got to jump back to this other storyline that we have to follow. Then it jumps back over to Superman's storyline. And it's just so overwhelming at times. And it's really hard to edit around all those problems and because of all that poor editing the pacing really suffers in this film because there's this big build-up to Superman and Batman fighting and then when it finally does happen it's so short and then as soon as that's over with now they gotta go fight Doomsday and it's just like wow what happened the first half of this film was paced all right, we have all this controversy around Superman and is he doing the right thing? And Batman is trying to save humanity from this guy that can turn on everybody and it's just wreck shop. But then all this convoluted Justice League, Doomsday, and like Batman conflict starts happening and then it just like, it loses it. I just, I didn't know what happened to this film. And then there's the issue of predictability. This film is pretty predictable. I mean, there's certain things that happen behind the scenes and you know exactly who's behind it. If you've seen the second trailer to this film, you pretty much know how it's gonna go. And there's a lot of moments in, that were in a lot of the other trailers as well that got spoiled for me. That whole joke between Batman and Superman with who Wonder Woman is with was spoiled. I thought that would have been a great moment had I not seen that. Then there's a whole bunch of other scenes that kind of lost their, their momentum because I saw that shot in the trailer. I know how that's going to go. Yeah, that's how, how it goes. Then there's that big problem that I have with Batman in this movie. And I don't think this is a spoiler. You see some of this in the trailer that Batman is killing a lot of people in this movie. And I'm not just talking about this nightmare sequence that he has. He kills people in that, you see it in the trailer, but also he kills a lot of other people without thinking twice about it. And that goes against everything the Batman character stands for. And I know a lot of people are gonna be thinking that if you read this one comic book, it's different. Or if you listen to Alfred in the movie, he kind of explains why he goes against his code. but. Without going into spoilers, there's this one moment in the film that really loses its weight if that if him killing is the case. And it's just, I'll go more into detail in my spoiler review, but it's just, I just don't understand why they went that direction. Another thing that I'm going to talk about in my spoiler review is the ending. I'm not, I don't want to give away too much about the movie, but the ending is probably the thing that I'm most conflicted about. I have so many different views about this ending and I'll talk about it more in my spoiler video. But out of all the problems that I have with this film, the biggest thing to me is that they're so concerned with making a Justice League movie and cramming all this Justice League tie-ins that they forgot to make a good film. Film. What I went to go see this movie for was Batman fighting Superman. I wanted to see the conflict between these two big heroes, but it got lost in this setup of the Justice League. And honestly, I think they should have just taken out Batman v Superman, just called this movie Dawn of Justice. That's what this movie is. And that was my biggest concern going into this film was they were going to worry so much about creating the cinematic universe, shove all these characters in it, and then the movie itself suffers. And that's what happened in this film. I really wish they would have focused more on the conflict between Batman and Superman and given me what I wanted, what us as fans wanted. So in the end, the comic book superhero fan in me enjoyed this film. I really liked seeing Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman on screen together and all these other Justice League characters tie into this film. I thought that was pretty cool. But the film going me was definitely disappointed with the sloppiness that was this film. There were things that I did like about this film, but then there were so many problems that I just couldn't ignore. So Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice barely gets a good game. So Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Leave a comment below, tell me your thoughts. Please, if you enjoyed watching this review, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this, you can click right here and see more videos. Bye, Andrew.